إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Indeed we begin with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that he azza wa jal should be praised We put our trust and our reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he alone We affirm our faith and our belief in he subhanahu wa ta'ala as our sustainer as our nourisher, as the one whom we turn to in all our affairs. We affirm the belief in our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the seal of all prophets and as the messenger who was sent to all mankind until the day of judgment as a warner and as a teacher and as a guide as to how the Muslim should live their life in accordance with the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which he expects and wants from us O gathering of Muslims fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared and when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala part of that fear and part of that taqwa and part of that consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when you come for his dhikr when you come for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this case the Jumu'ah, be in a position of dhikr. Sit in a way as though you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sit in a way as though you are remembering your creator, the one who has created you from nothing, the one who sustains you, and the one to whom you will return. Sit in a position of ihtiram. Sit in a position in which you are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of you and well aware of the condition of your heart and of your body and of yourself. As to what follows today, a man came home in a rush and in a panic. And he said to his wife, pack your bags. Pack your bags now, quickly pack your bags. She said, what's wrong? Where are we going? He said, pack your bags. She said, well, what should I pack? Where are we going? He said that we're going to so-and-so place. She said, for how long? He said, we're going indefinitely, just pack your bags. She said, what about the house? What about the car? What about the money? What about your job? What about so many things? How much clothes do I take? What? He said, just pack that we're leaving. Pack quickly and we're leaving right away. This situation, this individual, this man, what do we think of him? How do we perceive the, the instruction to his wife and to his family? Obviously there's something wrong. Obviously it is not within the norm to create such an excitement and to say pack that we're leaving right away without giving details, without knowing how long you're going for, how long you're staying, the status of your possessions. But this is the condition that each and every one of us will find ourselves in. 
every single one of us will have someone come to us and say get ready we're leaving right now and in that case you will not be packing your bags in that case you will not be asking how long in that case you will not have half an hour or an hour to get ready in that case you are told we're leaving now and the time for preparation is done the time for getting ready is done when you are told we're leaving now everything is over and every single one of us will be visited by one who will tell us this and that is none other than the angel of death none other than the angel of death will visit each and every one of us and will tell us it's time to go you're going forever you're not packing your clothes and your possessions and your cars and your house and your money no you're not taking any of that what you are taking should have already been prepared would have already been prepared what you are taking is waiting there for you at the time when the angel arrives one of my teachers he mentioned that from one of his teachers he heard that the, an individual so that they should remind themselves about this reality they should hang the cloth that they will be shrouded in in their closet where they can see it so it will be a reminder to them and look closely at this cloth that you will be shrouded in and realize that there are no pockets realize that there is no pockets there's no room for you to take anything with you that which you take is that which you have done that which you take is prepared for you every single day that you live your life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in the Quran about this reality that will reach every single one of us and we know the ayat but it is upon us to become cognizant what will you do when that angel comes to you and says get ready we're leaving now in our lives think about it when you're little when you're young you're in school you're in elementary school you go to middle school you're looking forward to high school you're preparing yourself for high school your parents are preparing you for high school you get to high school you start to prepare yourself for college you get to college you start to prepare yourself to work you start to work you start to prepare yourself to get married you start to get, you get married you start to prepare yourself to have a family you have a family all the while you're preparing yourself for the day that you're gonna retire how are you gonna enjoy your retirement how much money are you putting away to enjoy after you finished your tenure of working and this is fine this is okay but we're preparing and none of us will deny that we're preparing for these events in our life major life events but the reality is we have no idea if those events will come to pass we have no idea if those events will come to pass you prepare yourself with your degree out of high school preparing your grades preparing all of your extracurriculars so that you will be accepted into a university so that you will get a degree so that you will get a prestigious job how many do we know never make it out of high school how many do we know never get to use that degree that they accomplished in college they never make it to the workforce they plan to get married they never get married they plan for their retirement which is what we plan for and we save for and we put away for for a large portion of our life and so many people never reap that benefit so who is to tell you who is to guarantee that what you are preparing for will come to pass wallahi the only thing that you can prepare that undoubtedly will happen is that day 
when you're told, we're, get ready, we're leaving now. When that angel comes to you and takes your life by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the only reality that you are granted. That is the only certainty that you have. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, as a reminder, كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزها عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. Very famous ayah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the reality of death. And on that day, when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you have done in this life, you will get compensated for that which you have done in, in the rightful way. Allah azza wa he says about the day of judgment, he says that the day that you will meet him, la ظلم اليوم. There's no injustice. What you have done, you will get exactly what you have earned. You will get what is due to you. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Quran, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, He says that you will die. Most certainly you will die. And this life is a test with the good and the bad. And what? You will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, another very famous ayah, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ ثُمَّ إِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Very short and simple. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in Surah Al-Ankabut, Surely you will die. Every single one of you will taste of this death. ثُمَّ إِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And then, you're returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you return to the one who created you. What do you have prepared for the one who has created you? What do you have prepared when you stand in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you have prepared for the king and the owner of the day of judgment? We have in our lives, we have three stages. We have this life that we're living now. This is one stage. We have the stage when we die and we're in Barzakh. That's the second stage. And then we have the stage after, that everlasting life. Of the three stages, one is extremely, extremely minimal and extremely short as compared to the other two. And which one do we prepare for the most? Which one do we run after the most? Which one do we pursue? Allah answers that question for you. Allah knows exactly what we pursue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُمْ This world that we have is a is play. It's adornment. It's a distraction. And it's an enjoyment. And what do we do? We run and we seek that adornment, that distraction. This dunya we seek and we run behind it until there comes to us death. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the conclusion of that ayah, but indeed the real life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uses this term in the Qur'an. Indeed, the, the actual life, your actual existence is in the hereafter. This is but a short period of time. This is but a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says about the creation of life and of death, it is a test for mankind. So what are we doing to prepare? What are we doing for the day that we will be asked? Or we will be, we will be told rather, get ready, we're leaving now. Imagine, I want you to imagine this. <coughs> imagine that you knew, I knew, 
that tomorrow, tomorrow will be our janazah. Tomorrow will be our janazah. Imagine that you knew this reality. This, this was a reality that you knew. Tomorrow we will be praying janazah upon each and every one of us that are, that's here. Somebody, some people will be praying janazah for us. Imagine that reality. How would you spend tonight? If you got that reality, you got that affirmation in this khutbah as an example, how would you spend your life after this khutbah? What would you do with yourself from the time that you leave here till tomorrow? Undoubtedly, people will say that I will engage in the worship of Allah. I will seek His forgiveness. I will do this and I will do that and I will give and I will... And all of the things that they wanted to do, they would, they would say that, yes, I would do it. But wallahi, the reality is that the certainty of us dying is 100%. The certainty of us leaving this world is 100%. The certainty of you waking up tomorrow and me waking up tomorrow, which one of you will raise your hand and guarantee that you have been given allowance till tomorrow? Which one of us can guarantee that we have an allotted amount of time that is certain and that is sure. By Allah, none of us can guarantee that for sure we will live till tomorrow. That for sure we have another 10 years on this earth. That for sure we have 20, 30, 40 years. By Allah, none of us can guarantee that. And wallahi, I share with you my personal experience. In the past few months, I could list young individuals my age, younger than me, some older than me, who have passed away. Some who I attended school with, maybe one, two, three years older than me, some younger. I knew them as we were growing up. They attended the school, we saw each other, they were in the community, they were, they were here, they were there. Young people in their 20s. Recently, in the past few months, I can list an amount of them that have lost their lives. They have passed away. They have left this world. And I want you to think about something. That old man, 60, 70 years old, he knows that his time is near, or he should know. If he has lived to that point, he should know that his time is coming close. But what is the reality for the ones who are younger? The ones like myself, who feel as though we're young. We have youth, we have opportunity, we have health, we have wealth. We have time to do. We have time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have time to do whatever we want. Where is the wake-up call if it is not in this situation of these young people dying in front of our eyes? Where is the wake-up call? What would be the wake-up call for the young people? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds you in the Qur'an, in the beginning of Surah Al-Anbiya, اِقْتَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed 1400 plus years ago that the Day of Judgment, the day of, of, of recompense is coming. It's coming close. It's near. It's almost here. وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِضُونَ But you, you're heedless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling you that it's near. But you're heedless to the reality. You don't want to accept the reality. You don't want to take that precaution and take steps to protect your akhirah. There was an incident where a man, Muslim individual, he had several uh, businesses, he had stores. 
Muslim individual. Some of his stores, one of his stores was next to the masjid. And the administration of the masjid, they were having a meeting with one of the mashayikh who had visited from overseas. And they were telling him that, you know, we have this brother, he's, you know, mashallah, very wealthy, but he doesn't donate. And we could definitely benefit, I'm talking this brother, millionaire, and we could definitely benefit from some of his wealth. Would you talk to him? Would you maybe appeal to him? So the shaykh, he went, he spoke to the brother, he quoted ayat, he quoted, you know, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, you know, you should give in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all of these things. And the man, he wasn't too interested. As the shaykh, he was leaving, he said, okay, as alaykum. He left, he was about to leave. So the man, he calls, he says, yeah, shaykh, one thing, one second. He says that when I retire, when I'm done running my business, when I'm done, you know, achieving in terms of my wealth and in terms of my business, by Allah, I'm going to build a masjid. By Allah, I'm going to give to this masjid. By Allah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do... And so he listed a bunch of things. The Shaykh said, okay, go bring a paper. Go bring a piece of paper and a pen. So the man, he says, for what? So he says, go bring it. So he comes with the paper and the pen. And the Shaykh says, okay, write all of the things that you said that you're going to do when you retire. So he wrote it down. So then the Shaykh, he turns around to leave and he says, okay, when the angel of death comes to you, show him that paper. Show him that paper and tell him, this is what I was going to do. This is what I was going to do. And the man, he broke down crying. The man, he broke down crying at the message and at the significance of the reality that had just hit him. The way that we live our lives should reflect our goals. Many of us, we have jobs, we work in offices, we have, you know, we, we're in different trades, all of those things. For the week, or for the month, or for the quarter, or for the year, you have certain goals, you have certain things that you need to achieve or that you want to achieve. And so you work towards those things, you work towards those goals. And so people, your supervisor, your boss, they should see that you are operating in line with those goals. We have an ultimate goal in living our life. If someone was to view your life, view the way that we live, what would they say that our goals are? What would they say that our goals are? Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he makes mention of some of the benefits of reflecting on death. And he says from amongst them is that it causes you to repent. You realize that your reality is very short-lived on this earth. And so the sins that you commit, it causes you to repent to them, for them. He says that it causes you to be content with less. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Every single thing will perish. Every single thing will be wiped out. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذِي الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَانِ Except for the face of your Lord. Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all that's going to remain. You think that you're significant? You think that because Allah has given you some authority on the earth, that there's some significance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, no, kullu man Every single thing will perish. Every single thing will be reduced to nothing. And the third that Ibn Abbas, he mentions, is not competing over worldly life. And the way that we compete over the dunya is like a man, rich individual. He had land, hundreds of acres of land that he used and he cultivated and he, he was wealthy from his land. Obviously, he's not using these hundreds of acres that he has. He's not using all of it. And so he comes across 
a very poor individual. No money, not a penny to his name. No family, no wealth, no status, nothing. And so he tells this man, he says, I'll make a deal with you. He says, go, start running. Whatever distance you cover, whatever distance you cover running, in terms of the land, it's yours. To do with as you wish. But make sure that you come back to me, the spot where I'm at, the spot where you started. You have to reach back here by sunset or else the deal is off. You don't get anything. So the man, he starts to run. And he's pushing to himself to exhaustion. And he's running mile after mile after mile. And he's thinking to himself, you know, I've achieved something. You know, my life is going to change. I'm going to have wealth. I'm going to have some, you know, I'm going to have a different status in life. And so he's running, unconcerned about the fact that he has to return. And so he's running mile upon mile until he's exhausted and he stops. And he realizes that, it's all, that the sun is beginning to set and he needs to return to that point that he started from in order to get the land. And so he starts to go back. And heading back, he starts to run. Then he starts to jog, then he starts to walk until he reaches back at the time, just about the time of sunset, crawling and panting and totally out of breath and almost dying from exhaustion. And as he reached this point, he took his last breath and he died. And so this rich individual who had this land, who had promised him whatever you cover is yours, and this man who was so consumed by the idea of wealth, by the idea of power and status, he lay there dead after running and seeking. And so this rich individual, he tells his servant who was with him, give him a piece of the land, dig for him six feet, and that's what is his. This is the reality of our life. This is the reality of what we have. When our life ends, what are we taking with us? What is for us on this earth, except for a six foot hole that we will be buried in? We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good end. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our eyes to this reality. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the people who have an easy and good death. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entrance into his jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa kafa, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin amma ba'd qala Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-kareem wa jaaat sakratu al-mawti bil-haq thalika ma kunta minhu tahid wa nufikha fi al-suri thalika yawm al-wa'id Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in surah al-Qaf when the certainty, when the reality, when the pain of death overtakes you, that is when you will realize, that is when you will come to understand what is true, what is right, what is reality. And you will be met with the same thing that you were trying to avoid. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says very beautiful ayah, very scary ayah as well. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Say to them, O Muhammad, that death from which you are running away from, that death which you are running from, when you're running from something, it's behind you. When you're running away from something, it's behind you. That death that you're running from, 
it will meet you. That death which you're running away from is in reality in front of you. You will meet your death. You will run into your death. And you will be faced and returned to the one who created you. The one who knows every single thing. And he will inform you about what you used to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform you at that point. Every single thing that you used to engage in. Every single thing that you used to do and I used to do. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the people who engage in the obedience of He subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our hearts so that His message penetrates into, our, into us. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala convert that which we are reminded with into action. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and our families and all of the Muslims across the world. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save and protect and grant his assistance to all of the Muslims across the world, those who are in hardship and those who are in difficulty. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save, save them and safeguard them. قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقوموا إلى صلاتكم